I don't see the beginning of the year as indicative of anything this year. I think, if anything, this is going to be a very, very difficult year where we start to feel the effects of the Fed rate hikes on economic growth. And so it's going to be very clear by the end of the summer that we're in a downtrend and it's going to become very difficult to call this anything but a recession, in my opinion. I started last year with a very, very bearish call, but it's a completely different one than today. You have to wind back the clock to September of 2021, where I did a conference call, and I had this theme that I called Fedflation. And essentially, what I was describing was a world where leading indicators are trending lower because of the exhaustion of fiscal stimulus, pandemic stimulus, and because rates did move higher before the Fed got involved. They bought them in June of 2020, and so they have been moving higher. So because of the pressure from rates, the pandemic stimulus that is fading. And so that's a classic slowdown, but a world where at some point inflation would force the Fed's hand and we would see the Fed tightening rates just as leading indicators are trending lower. So essentially the Fed tightening into a slowdown. And looking back in history, you realize that that's a very rare event. I could only find four examples Going back to the late 60s, two of those were in the 1970s, and none of them ended well because, again, it's the Fed that's tightening into a slowdown. So that's what initially made me pretty concerned. Now, in September of 2021, I'm saying I'm afraid we're going to be in this situation at some point. And if you recall, Powell kind of changed his tune in December last year. And so my outlook is now this is the scenario we're faced with. And it's especially concerning because the S&P is growthier than it has been. And that means it has a lot more stocks that are very, very sensitive to changes in interest rates. And what you see in these episodes is that the first part of the bear market is PEs get crushed as the Fed raises rates. And I would argue that's the story of last year. For value stocks last year, it wasn't that unusual of a year. It's just that value was a small share of the index compared to history. And the growthier you were, the more PE compression you had. So that's a very unusual performance in the business cycle. But again, This is a unique set of circumstances. So it was very bearish because I thought PEs were going to get crushed. And what is normally the point in the cycle that is the sweet spot for growth, when the economy is just slowing, people tend to gravitate toward those growth companies. This time, growth was what was being threatened the most. So that was the heart of the bearish call in 2022. The two-step bear market where you initially feel the PE effect which is concentrated on the growth segment of the market. And that's the story of last year. And the story of this year is that we're now going to get a repricing of earnings for all stocks in the market. Again, I go back to the comment I made earlier, how bear markets are really about a decline in earnings. In many ways, last year is the appetizer, not the real bear market. The classic bear market is just upon us now. I realized that in five years, when we look back on this era, we're going to say the bear market started, I think it was Jan 2 or Jan 3 last year when the S&P hit an all-time high. But in the classic sense where this is really about falling earnings, this is just the tipping point. Forward earnings, if you look at small cap, mid cap, and the S&P 500, really are just starting to top out. But again, these anticipatory series, knowing that earnings bottom with the economy, knowing that the economy bottoms two years after a peak in rates, we're talking about a story that potentially runs into 2025 for the economy. So that's a long ways away, and it's well beyond the stock market's ability to discount. And so stock market's able to see about six months 
into the future. And the advantage that looking at macro, looking at interest rates gives you is that it allows you to view much beyond that. When you follow the business cycle and you know the history of interest rates in the economy, Fed tightening and what subsequently follows, this is a pretty scary place to be because it's rare to see two years in a row with big declines in the equity market. But again, it's also unusual to see the Fed raise rates in a slowdown to be behind the curve. At the end of the day, they started raising rates after inflation hit a 40-year high. But now we have to live through that. We have to basically live through the classic bear market. This is going to take a long time. It's hard for me to see how the stock market bottom any time between the middle of next year, and that's an eternity when you're watching markets, and that can move, but it can only move in one direction, which is further out, if the Fed ends up tightening more than people believe. And so bond yields move on to new highs, then you're extending that slowdown, you're extending how deep it will be, and you're pushing that goalpost for a bottom and leading indicators, including stocks. 